Hello, good morning. This is slide number one. The title of my talk is Aluminium Sustainability Index, How to Make Aluminium Truly Green. My name is Subodh Das at Phoenix LLC in USA. Slide number two is Aluminium Production, Mining to Recycling. A couple of points, uh, about 12 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per ton of aluminum. Second point is about 13,000 to 18,000 kilowatt hour of electricity required to smelt or to produce one ton of aluminum and it requires about 4% of the world's electricity consumption and 1% of global carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gases emission. Slide number three. <clears throat> the issue of sustainability. Aluminum is still extracted from bauxite or in two age-old stages of production the mined bauxite refined into alumina through bare process, which is then reduced to aluminum through Hall Hero process. The concern over high carbon dioxide emission is still looming large on the aluminum, compelling industry majors and the R&D organizations to invest in alternative production technologies. However, there are several sustainability challenges across the value chain beyond just carbon dioxide emission. The emphasis solely on fuel sources while determining the sustainability index for the aluminum industry is a partial solution. A shout out to the global aluminum industry to make sectors sustainable and green in the real sense of the term. Slide number four, uh, sustainability challenge across the value chain. We have divided the value chain in several <coughs> sectors. First one, bauxite mining, and the sustainability factor is bauxite tailing. Second is alumina refining, and the sustainability factor there is bauxite residue. Third one is power generation, and the factor is carbon dioxide equivalent emission. Next one is anode manufacturing, and products of combustion is a sustainability factor. The next one is aluminum smelting. There are three factors there, <clears throat> PFC emissions, carbon dioxide emissions, and spent pot lining. The next one, aluminum melting and casting. The sustainability factor is dross and salt cake production. The next one is aluminum recycling, and the factors are landfilling and downgrading. Slide number five, sustainability is a whole as opposed to part. It's like elephant saying that is elephant a tail or is it a fan like is the elephant's ear. And in the picture we have shown the different aspects of sustainability in terms of going <coughs> clockwise, uh, in terms of PFC emission, spent part line, dross and salt cake, aluminum scrap in landfills, fills, bauxite tailings, bauxite residue, and carbon dioxide emission, and finally the product combustion. Slide number six, number one, bauxite tailing. The key environmental concern associated with bauxite mining are the rehabilitation of mined out areas and the disposal of bauxite tailing that are generated during the flotation process. A feasible and cost-effective solution to lessen this hazardous effect from poisonous mine tailings and rehabilitation of the mining area remain one of the key challenges for the aluminum industry. Slide number seven, the bauxite residue. The waste generation grows bigger during the bauxite process, which generates bauxite residue or red mud in huge quantity. 
The usual practice allows storage of red mud in a slurry form, but some alumina producers also practice dry disposal. Red mud generation can vary from 0.3 to 2.5 tons per ton of alumina produced. As per estimate, there exists a global inventory of more than 3 billion tons of bauxite residue. Slide number eight is VFC and carbon dioxide emission. Primarily, four stages in aluminum production process are responsible for greenhouse emissions like perfluorocarbons, VFC, and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide emission during electricity or power generation for consumption in aluminum production process. Combustion of fo fossil fuel during aluminum alumina refining. Emissions from carbon anode consumption during the electrolysis process and the PFC emission generated during the generation operational disruption in the electrolysis cell because of anode effect. The major share of carbon dioxide emission in the aluminum production process goes into the smelting operation which forms about 80% of the total 12 tons of carbon dioxide generated in the entire process of producing one ton of aluminum from mining to casting. Slide number nine, the products of combustion. Carbon anodes used in primary aluminum productions are produced in dedicated plant inside or outside aluminum smelters. The production process involves mixing of raw materials such as coke, pitch, and recycled anode butts, compaction of paste, baking, and a green anode and rotting. Anode production is self-energy intensive process consuming about 388 kilowatt hour per ton of energy. Further, the process releases combustion, burning of byproduct products like gases and small particles in the air. Slide number 10, spent part lining, SPL. Spent part lining, SPL, is the most significant solid waste from the aluminum smelting process and the second largest in the volume after bauxite residue. When refractory and the carbon lining of the electrolytic, electrolytic part come to an end of the life, usually four to seven years, it is considered an SPL. As per data from International Aluminium Institute in 2018, nearly 1.6 million tons of SPL were generated from primary aluminum reduction. More than 50% of SPL generated annually is stored indefinitely or landfill and rest are recycled. Slide number 11, dross or salt cake. Another byproduct of aluminum smelting and the recycling process is aluminum dross, which has been finding its way into landfill for years. It's only recently that the aluminum industry realized its significance as a secondary source for metal recovery. It was reported that about 3 million tons of white dross and more than 1 million tons of black dross is being produced every year, and more than 50% of this is landfill. Slide number 12, landfill and downgrading. One of the biggest concerns for the aluminum industry is that all byproducts, residue and end of the life products from the aluminum value chain are ending in landfill, if not treated or reutilized. The landfill statistics in the US, one of the largest consumer of aluminum, gives a fair idea how aluminum ends in landfill. As per the data from the United States Environment Protection Agency, EPA, in 2018, aluminum was generated about 2.7 million tons, or 1.3% of total municipal solid waste generation at 3.9 million tons. Slide number 13 how the industry is addressing these sustainability issues. We are listing several items. The first one is low carbon aluminum technology. Second one is alternative to the whole hero technology. 
third one is anode effect management the fourth one is application of industry 4.0 framework the fifth is bauxite telling and red mud or bauxite residue management projects sixth one is dross and spent part line recycling and the seventh one is enhanced aluminum recycling especially when it comes to used beverage cans in the u.s however the industry's focus is currently concentrated on the developing green aluminum as a product based on source of fuel Slide number 14, green aluminum definition and methodology. All current aluminum, all current green aluminum brands tend to range around four tons direct and indirect carbon dioxide equivalent emission. The methodology and definitions are aligned with, number one, greenhouse gas protocol, corporate accounting reporting standards. International Aluminium Institute's definition of level one and two emissions. Carbon Trust Methodology Statements. Aluminum Stewardship Initiative ASI Standards. Slide number 15. All sustainable aluminum is green, but all green aluminum may not be sustainable. A producer cannot claim advantage or superiority based upon on the kind of fuel being used in the producing, producing aluminum. Hydropower is a gift of nature and so it must be exploited conservatively. Not all aluminum producers have access to hydropower. Green aluminum has the potential to create a parallel market with long-term growth opportunities. The demand and supply of green aluminum will grow because of the stricter carbon emission goals. It is likely to lead to a reduction in total global emissions. However, a lot is yet to be done towards standardizing green aluminum as a commercial product. In a growth market for aluminum, the world needs every pound of aluminum that is being made. Slide number 16, the bottom line, the, the true Sustainability green aluminum for global aluminum industry cannot be measured based just upon green fuel. With such a wide range of sustainability challenges to be addressed across the value chain, the industry needs to holistic approach towards sustainability. We need to design a cradle to grave sustainability index for global, global aluminum institute that addresses all the issue discussed above. More detailed discussion of this approach can be found on the paper that I have published titled The Quest of Low Carbon Aluminium, Developing a Sustainable Index in Light Metal Age to February 2021. And the slide number, uh, last slide number 17, I thank you for listening. If you're interested to know more on green aluminum and aluminum sustainability index, please feel free to contact me. I could be reached at Dr. Subodh Das, Phoenix LLC, skdas at phoenix.net or 859-619-8386. The website is www.phoenix.net. I thank you for listening and you have a great day. Bye.